The patterns we see in breast cancer tell us that a lot of breast cancer is preventable. Many people have the idea that it's mostly genetic. That's not true. Only 5 or 10 percent of breast cancers are due to the high-risk inherited genes. Only 27 percent is due to genes altogether, including the ones that we haven't discovered yet. So that leaves a lot of room for prevention. We also see in the epidemiology some risk factors that, that give us clues to what other risk factors might be out there. For example, um, we do know that pharmaceutical hormones like combination hormone replacement therapy, or DES, increase breast cancer risk. So that makes us think about the potential for other chemicals that mimic hormones or disrupt them in some way to cause breast cancer. Traditionally, the medical community is looking for human epidemiologic studies to tell us the causes of disease. But the problem with breast cancer is breast cancer develops over the entire life course. We know that there are risk factors starting before birth and during puberty and a woman's early reproductive years and all the way up to the five years before diagnosis. In a prevention context, we don't want to do a study that takes 60 years to find out that the chemicals we're using in today increase breast cancer risks. We just saw an example of this with DES. DES was prescribed to women during pregnancy because it was thought to reduce miscarriage. That turned out not to be true. But what we learned was that the DES, which is an estrogen, caused increased breast cancer risk not only in the mothers, but also in the daughters. And the daughters just won a lawsuit 60 years later when the evidence comes out in an epidemiologic study linking the DES to their disease. That shows you uh, why we don't want to wait for traditional epidemiology to tell us the answers. Silent Spring Institute really developed an, a different approach, a prevention-oriented research agenda where we look at lab studies and say, what does this chemical do biologically? Is it a breast carcinogen in animals? Does it make breast cancer cells grow in a lab? Does it affect the development of the breast? And if the answer to that is yes, then we want to know how women are exposed and what are the most important exposures so we can reduce them rather than waiting 60 years to find out that they're linked to breast cancer. In 2007, Silent Spring Institute led a team of researchers reviewing what's known about the environmental factors in breast cancer. So I was responsible for reviewing the epidemiologic studies on environmental chemicals in breast cancer. Uh, what we found is we haven't barely scratched the surface in this field. Only a few of the many suspect chemicals have ever been included in an epidemiologic study. Since then, the Institute of Medicine, relying upon our review as well as some other work, has singled out benzene, 1,3-butadiene, and ethylene oxide as chemicals with the strongest evidence of links to breast cancer. All three of them are in tobacco smoke. Benzene and butadiene are also in uh, auto exhaust. Ethylene oxide is a sterilant that was widely used in uh, medical settings, it's not used so much. Uh, there's a lot more protection for workers nowadays in medical settings, but it's still used in food sterilization. So we're beginning to have some clues uh, from epidemiology about links to breast cancer, but the, the main message is we haven't looked. There are literally hundreds of chemicals that are suspect that haven't ever been included in a human breast cancer study. Of course, once we find a suspect chemical, we want to reduce exposure. And, and the reality is we need to work together to do that. In the examples of benzene and butadiene, for example, they're in air pollution. So we need to be concerned as a society about improving gasoline mileage on cars and switching to electric. And um, fuel efficiency in general. But we also can make decisions ourselves to buy fuel efficient appliances 
and uh, every t anybody who switches to to electric vehicle will cut, won't have to pump gas anymore, and uh, they won't be exposed to benzene from gasoline at the gas station. We also need to change the focus of our national cancer investment. Right now, we're spending 17 billion dollars a year on treatment. Of course, we want to continue the best treatment for women who've already been diagnosed, but we need to also invest in prevention and shift our research agenda so we're finding the causes and then changing things. The Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition is an organization dedicated to preventing environmental causes of breast cancer through community education, research advocacy, and changes to public policy. For more information, please visit nbcc.org or silentspring.org.